All right, so today, today what we're gonna do is walk through the financial services blueprints and demonstrate how to, from soup to nuts, create the workspace with all of the pre-baked, pre-installed best practices, quick starts, um, and industry-specific content. So from the homepage, this is linked directly from the blog, you'll actually see a readme with all the different components that are deployed as part of the blueprints. So what we're gonna do is actually, I'll, I'll go through and show you know, from code download onward what we're gonna do to deploy, but I'll just get it started here in the process. I'm just gonna do a quick apply. This is going to actually create all of the infrastructure, AWS infrastructure in particular, because we're gonna just focus on AWS as our first example and then create the workspace with all of the best practices such as private link and private communication between data plane control plane, restricted root bucket, et cetera. So all that's gonna happen right now for our AWS workspace. If we head back to this homepage, this is actually the GitHub code. You'll see that there, all three clouds are included here. So whether you're deploying a new financial service as like us on AWS, Azure, or GCP, then you can click into these folders and then start to get a sense of what those customizations look like. So for example, for GCP, things like service controls um, and perimeters are, are in scope for that extra customization that's already pre-baked in. For AWS, it would be other things such as private link that are built in here by default. In addition to some of those features such as private link and other security features, we have this FS Lakehouse folder, which, is, which are the industry quick starts that are baked in. And what this comes equipped with are pre-installed clusters, jobs, libraries, to help you get started coding faster with all of your financial service use, use cases. So that could be credit risk and getting a, a common data model installed into the platform, in which case there are pre-installed libraries. For example, WaterBear, which helps you enforce schema for all these different data models. And there's also Tempo. So Tempo is actually used for time series analytics. And we've seen a lot of success among our customer base with Tempo for post-trade analytics in particular. So a couple of those are pre-installed, but you can feel free to customize this if there's something else that you want, such as you know, great expectations for data quality or other custom libraries. Um, you can specify the library and a version. So those will be pre-installed onto this ready-made cluster. And you can choose whatever notebook you want as well. So we have a sample notebook here, which is pretty straightforward, uh, but you can create what you need to. So uh, again, from the documentation, we can just come in here and, and demonstrate you know, how this would be downloaded. I'll go ahead and download, download it to a new folder, but the exact same structure and process will be enforced here. Okay, so if we go into this new folder, um, all you're gonna wanna do is git clone the repository and you'll see everything here. This. We'll see everything here from AWS to GCP. And you can kind of take that code and, and customize, it, customize it as you see fit. What's included here mainly is just the Terraform code. And then uh, you know, additional files if there's a, a little bit of data as part of the quick start will be included as well. So this is uh, what's included. Uh, from when you download the code, code you have inside the ID here, you can see all the different folder structures. I went through this base customer VPC. This is actually what we are creating now. So this will take a few minutes. That will have all that um, infrastructure networking. And then the lake house itself, again, will have the industry specifics. So water bear, tempo, those libraries, and a notebook, which actually you can run as a job. So that's what's there for AWS, which is the example we're focused on today. Once this is complete, you'll be able to actually click on the notebook itself, the hyperlink, and it will take you directly to the workspace. So we'll go ahead and wait for this to complete, and then we'll bolt on our FS Lakehouse. Okay, so that was completed about after a minute and 42 seconds for the workspace. Now what we're actually gonna do is again, bolt on that FS Lakehouse code. So type in FS Lakehouse. This has more of the industry quick starts and things like that. So we'll just quickly update a few configuration variables, our module, and we should be good to go. So all the infrastructure has been destroyed prior to, uh, prior to this launch. So hit apply. Okay, we're gonna add 18 resources. 
all focused on things like Databricks groups uh, for governance. We're actually going to set up an external AWS S3 bucket so that we can have for dedicated processing and all the IAM configuration, things like that, the creation of a notebook um, that has all these industry best practices. That's what's included here. So you'll see a lot of Databricks specific configurations. Um, and again, as you're doing this across cloud, a lot of this code, this Terraform code will actually be identical. So you can feel free to just have that reused. You can see here that the configuration was applied and is complete. So uh, you, know, you can click on this specific notebook link, job URL to get to the job itself, um, change naming configurations, et cetera. But this is basically the creation of that blueprint for your financial services lake house. Should you, you can see that we actually did this all within um, you know, a few minutes of just getting this process up and started and downloading the code. So with that, um, look forward to seeing all these Lake House implementations. And if you, there are any questions or issues you want to post to the GitHub for additional customization or just documentation, you can always do that uh, in the issues here, which we'll, we'll be public facing.